and we are going to talk about today's topic, uh, which is Google Classrooms, uh, because we all are into online learning these days, uh, whether we talk about short term courses or long term courses, everything we are trying to manage online, especially after the coding, uh, COVID scenario. So in this uh, uh, process, it is important to learn variety of online tools that can help you to improve your teaching learning process. And in order to do today, we are going to talk about one important tool, which is Google Classrooms. And in this, we have plenty of details to discuss because this is a widespread platform which is being used for a variety of sessions around the world. And we need to learn how to access it, how to use it at multiple levels. And for that, uh, first of all, we need to log into the Google Classroom platform. I'll be creating a live session for you all so you can join also. You can see that how it appears on the student side as well as on the teacher side. So I'll be exploring both ends for you. Starting with how we uh, begin with this Google Classroom platform, you can either access it right from your Gmail or you can type uh, Google Classroom on Google platform itself and it will take you to the desired link. So let me show you both options because considering it from right from the beginning, when you log in to your Gmail account, first of all, you can go to Google Apps and if you scroll down, in the list, you have the option Google Classrooms. You can click on this and it will take you directly to the Google Classrooms window. Other than this, you can also go online and on the browser window, you can type Google Classrooms. And from here as well, you will be taken to the official platform where you can access many other tools along with Google Classrooms because Google is currently providing several tools for the educators. You can pick one uh, tool, which is your Google Classrooms. And for this, we first need to sign in. So if you are starting from another PC where your Gmail account is already not logged in, they may ask you to sign in. So you can sign in first and then you can start with your Google Classrooms. It will be better if you want to do side by side so that you can practice also things. So currently, because I'm signed in on the system, so you can see uh, the window is appearing here. And because here is one session that was already created, so that is also present. And on this top uh, corner, you can see the login details. In your case, if it is not logged in already, you will have a sign in option right here. So first of all, you can sign in. And I will be using it from two different accounts to show you the teacher part as well as the student part. So you can explore both of them one by one. First, this window I'll be using as a teacher account. So you can see that one session we have created already over here. And we can start creating new sessions also. So it starts with the plus sign you will find on the top of the screen. So if you click on this plus sign, here you have option to join class or create class. So when you are working on this platform as a teacher, you can use create class option. And when you are working as a student, maybe tomorrow if you want to teach your students also about how they can join the Google Classroom on which you can create different classes. So they will be using join class option. So currently, whatever classes I'll be using, if you want to join that and you want to interact live with the Google Classroom session with the, the session I'll be creating, you can use join class option for that. So those who are going to use it for the very first time, how the window will appear for you. So once you have logged in, you will have this clean window since uh, a new user will not have any existing session in the list. So this clean window will appear on your screen. And from here, you can click on create class as a teacher or join class as a student. Both options are there. So starting from here, as a teacher, as we want to create a class first, that will be your very first step while working on Google Classrooms. So let us click on the plus button and then we'll create class. So it will just ask you for uh, uh, clicking on the terms and conditions and we can continue. And now we can enter class name. So depending upon what type of students you are teaching, whether it is certain semester program, some annual program, some specific course you are teaching, you can put the name right here. 
for example uh, i'm entering here a random name uh, like we can have maybe short term codes or we can have short term codes for this one and section depending upon how your arrangement goes for classes in the institution you can have different section as per requirement and subject also if you are teaching a specific subject you can put that so in my case i am putting here classroom or we can precisely say google classroom as subject and room number of course because uh, this google classroom platform is not just for virtual training but several teachers are using it for the hybrid modes as well so if you are taking some classes in the live platforms as well as you are taking some classes uh, from the online system so in that case the room number you can mention for reference of the students so it can be as per your organization requirement so we can create the class finally although all these things are optional just the class name is the required field that you have to put so it will take just a few seconds to create your class and then we'll uh, be able to start uh, further process on this so you can see now we have the short term course class ready on our screen and now here we will see several different options that we can handle with the first thing there is a customization option so this customization option can help you to change the banner image so if you are uh, willing to put up some uh, specific subject banner or maybe a banner of your organization you can put that over here and there is a library of some photographs also that you can choose so just click on the customize option right here and then you can select photo or you can even select theme color this is just for the decor purpose if you want to add something new into your background so we can maybe select photo from here and they have a uh, existing set of banners that you can choose for depending upon what subject you are teaching or you can definitely upload your own image as well so let us take a random image from maybe art section we can take and uh, let me pick up this image and we can select it as class theme so it will be immediately updated and we can save it and soon it will be available as your class banner so next part we have several things on your screen and we can make different adjustments with this but first of all because you as a teacher need to connect with your students on this particular platform so you need them to associate to your this particular course and for that we have multiple options right here first technique to get your students enrolled to this particular class or whatever class you have created is you can display them a class code which is right in front of your screen here we have the class code you can see on the left side of your screen where you have created your class you can just click on this display button and the class code will be displayed same as you are doing it right now on your screen so if you are teaching your students online or maybe they are in the same classroom you can display this code on the big screen and they can use this particular code to join same as you all can do for example you can just go to your google classroom window if you are doing it side by side definitely it will be good if we can interact over here so you can click on the plus button and click on join class and here you can enter the same class code that i have shown you on the window here this is the first option to help your students uh, connected with your this particular classroom so as soon as you start uh, or your students start joining the list will appear on the classroom so any of you if you are entering this code in your platform your name will be appearing in the list of this uh, short term course over here that i can show you later first option to join uh, students we have seen now second option maybe you want to share the joining link with the student uh, on different platforms maybe through gmail or maybe from whatsapp groups or any other uh, technique that you are following so for that what you can do is you can simply copy this invite link from here and you can paste it anywhere wherever you want to share for instance right now if i want to share it in the same google meet session that we have so i can copy the link and i can put it here in the chat box and share it so you all can click on this link 
and you can uh, proceed ahead with joining of this particular course. So this is the second option we can see, or if you want to uh, display it uh, with the full screen, that is also possible over here. So that anyone in a bigger classroom can see the code easily and they can join the link. So this option we have seen for allowing your students to join uh, from the live session or maybe from the classroom where you are sitting right now. The other part we can have is you can also add students manually to your this platform. And how we can do that? You can simply go to the people section available on the classroom. And here you can see two portions. First, we have the teachers part where I can see one teacher name assigned because I have created this course. So my name is here. And in the student section, currently I can see uh, one person has joined from the team and we can see their name right here in the list. So depending upon how many students are joining the course, they can interact over here. So other than this, maybe in some cases, we have like two teachers assigned for the same course or same class. In that case, we can add up new teachers into the sequence so that they can have a teacher profile on the same course. So that is definitely optional thing over here. And if you want to add more students, that is also possible. And for this type of addition, when you do it from the paper window, you need to have email ID of the students that you want to add into this classroom. So in order to do that, we can click on invite student option. And here you can put up the email IDs for anyone who want uh, to join your session. So if you have list of the students who want to join this session, you can just copy and paste that list over here. Or you can just select the list from here. For example, I have selected this first one. So we can click on invite and the invite will be sent to the person online. So I can see, uh, thanks for joining this session. We can see so many participants over here right now. And definitely we can see some interactions when I'll be sharing some uh, things on this particular course. So after this, now since I have also invited one student manually that you can see this one. It is currently disabled because the student on the other side may not have accepted the invitation right now because we have entered this manually. So in order to do this, let us go to the other platform, maybe on the student side, what it will do is. So here we will have, first of all, one, I can refresh it and we will see the invite in the email ID of the student. So as soon as we get it, uh, here you can see the class invitation for short term course that I recently sent to this particular ID and we can click on join class right here. So this option your students will find in their email ID. So as soon as they click on join class, they will be asked to proceed ahead. So if they want to join class or if they do want to use a different account, that is a possibility over here. We can click on join right now. And it will initially bring you to the same platform, the same class that I have created in, for the students over here. So you can see the same window that I was having as a teacher on the other uh, browser, the same is appearing for the students. And I hope all of you can see this window simply on your screen as well, because you have joined the course right now. So this is the student side of the story. Now getting back to the teacher's access, since we have several students and if I refresh this one now, you can see this one is currently disabled. But now as we have uh, accepted the invitation from the other side and now this will be enabled in the sequence. So you can see this student is now also active. So in this manner, we can have multiple students in our session. This is the three different techniques we have learned to include students into your Google Classrooms platform. Now, there are different settings that initially you would like to do. So we can go to the settings button that we have on top right corner of your screen. As a teacher, you can do this. So click on the class settings. And here, initially, we have few details that, of course, we have already filled in uh, while creating the class. But if we scroll down, we will have some general settings as well. First of all, here you will see the invite link, class code, as well as if you want to display class code. These options are already available on the home screen as well. 
But further to this, we have a different settings as well. So first of all, the stream setting we can see. On this Google Classroom platform, if you want to enable your students to post or stream something, then you can make selection, students can post and comment. But if you want to restrict the access for the students, in that case, you can click it as only teachers can post or comment so that the control is with the teachers only. And at the same time, within this section, classwork on the stream. So when we are updating some classwork, whether you want your attachment to be appearing or some notification for this or you want to hide notifications so whatever is happening in your classwork stream that setting you can do from here so maybe you want to allow some limited notification that are essential for you though you can allow that so these are essential settings that you can do initially and after this one more thing we have is you can uh, manage the meet link also that is also optional we need not to discuss because we know how to share the meet link but yes now we come to the grading section and this is the grade calculation that you can do for overall grade of the students so for example if you are managing a short-term course or a annual program you may have a grading system for that maybe you access students with internal exams or external exams with some class tests etc so you can have a weighted grade category for that so currently you can see in the drop down menu we have no overall grade but if you click on this option, we have total points and we have weighted by category. This is the most widely used option. So we can click on weighted by category and then we can add grade category over here. So for instance, if I click on this, we can see different grade categories and you will see that we have total 100% that we can allot to different categories. So maybe in the first category, I'm writing here assignments because we will be assigning some assignments to the students. So maybe we want to allocate like maybe 10% for the assignments. And then we can add one more category and you will see that when I have allocated 10% over here, it says remaining 90% because it will allow you to utilize all 100% in different categories. So first we had the assignments, then maybe we can have class tests for the students. So let me allocate another section of 20% for this. Now we are left with 70%. So creating one more category with maybe we can have internal exams or sessional exams, whatever you call uh, them. So maybe I'm allocating 30% for this or 20%, whatever you want to do. And then we can have last grade category for external exams. So depending upon what grading system you follow in your organization, you can update that. And we are left with 40% so that I can add up here. So now your grading categories are done and we can save this now. We are ready to save it and we can utilize these grade categories later on. I'll show you that how they will be useful for you in different categories. Now students are enrolled and the grades are ready and now we are ready to stream something on the classroom platform. And for this, we have the stream option on the top. The stream is basically to help you make some announcements in the class because we may have different types of uh, announcements to make for the students, whether it is for some sessional exams, whether it is for some events happening in your platform, or maybe some class tests you want to conduct. So all those announcements you can make right from here. And in order to do that, we just have to click on announce something to their class. We just click on this and then we find a window that we can edit. So as a teacher, you can update different details into the sequence. For example, first we have, because currently I have two different courses added into the sequence. One is short term course, other is teaching learning course because I have created two classes. So you can either select both of them or any one of them depending upon. It clearly means that whether you want to make your announcement to only one course or to all the courses or maybe a limited number of courses in sequence, you can do that right from here. So it allows you to manage multiple courses even from the same window. 
So if there is a major announcement, like maybe you are attending uh, three different semesters from the organization and you want to make a common announcement to all three different semesters. So you can select all of them from the sequence and the common announcement will be made to all those courses. So this is going to save much of your time. Currently, let me make this announcement to this particular section only that we have created recently. And now inside this also, you have further control. Maybe if you want to make announcement to some limited students, like we have a long list of students who have joined the session right here. So we can make selections out of this, whether you want to include all students in the announcement or not. That is completely optional and you can use it as per your choice. So currently, I'll be making announcement to all participants who are in this session. So we can click on all students here. And once we are ready with these settings, we can write the announcement over here. So for example, we want to make a random announcement like a class test at 4 p.m. So this is the announcement we are making for the student. And along with this, depending upon whether you have an online class, uh, class test or offline, you can probably add the class details. Maybe if it is an offline class, you can add a room number of the class, like 208. And if it is an online class, you can add a Google Meet link. So that you can paste over here. So maybe if I take up the same link that we are using right now and paste it here. So this is definitely optional. So this is the initial announcement. And now one more thing, this gives you option to make highlights on your announcement. So for example, I want to make it bold. I can select it and we can highlight it for the reference of the students. And we can also make italic underline or bold statements or maybe some bullet points you want to add. So everything is possible. Now, along with this, we have few different options as well. That will be more interesting to use. So below this announcement section, you can see these four options attached. First is add a file from your Google Drive. So maybe if you want to add some attachment into this announcement, maybe you want to give them some book, you want to give them some notes, so that you can update from your drive right now. Similarly, we can also have a YouTube video attached to this announcement. So you can just click on this option and it will help you to add a YouTube video that maybe students want to watch. Then we can have an upload file option. So if you are interested to upload something from the drive uh, on your system, then you can click on this upload file option. And one more thing we have is add link. So in case if you don't want to add your link in this portion, you can use add link from here, completely optional, depending upon how you want to create your stream. So we can just take this link from here and we can use the add link option and we can put this link right here. So if we add this link, it shows class video meeting link is added up here. And you can have option to remove attachment that will be your, uh, depending upon your requirements. So this first, attachment we have added to the announcement. Now, maybe you want to give students a video that they can watch before the test. So we can go to the this YouTube platform and you can search for the video that you want to attach or maybe if you have the URL, you can paste it directly. So for an instance, let me add one video, Maths Basics. For example, I'm adding and I'm searching it first of all here. And maybe I'm uh, putting up this first one. It will say add video. So as soon as I click on add video, you can see the attachment is right here. So whenever you want your students to refer to some notes, some video tutorials, anything uh, with reference to your announcement, you can put that here. Or if you have some book to give, you can definitely go to your Google Drive and you can attach any of your uh, drive folders or maybe some notes or codes, anything that you have from your drive. After this, you have uh, once you have made all the adjustments for the announcement, we have an option to post and there are a few additional options in the drop down menu. You can either schedule this post or you can save it in the draft, depending upon your requirement. If you schedule your post, 
maybe if you don't want to post it right now but maybe after one day or maybe after one week so you can click on schedule option and you can hit on the uh, timeline that you want to follow for this or maybe like on 15th june on 8 a.m a.m you want to uh, post this automatically so if you are busy like for a week and you want to make certain announcement in the middle of that busy week so you can create it in advance and you can schedule it anywhere in between as per your requirement and it will be automatically posted to all your students and they can see that you are active and you are uh, giving them some task so currently let us avoid the schedule option rather we will post it right now so that you all can see especially those who have joined it so i'm just posting it right here and you can see we have the class test detail uh, active on the stream window and what will happen on the student end so let us switch to the switch student window over here and we can see a notification on the top stream was updated show this is the first notification student is getting over here so if they click on show option, you can see the same announcement they can see on their window right here. So those who have joined the, uh, this particular uh, session on the same platform, they may see uh, this particular announcement in their uh, uh, this session in the stream part. So based on this, students can do their activities and they can respond to you. So this is the first thing uh, students can do uh, with your announcements. Now once you have made announcements maybe now next you are interested to add some class work for the students so of course that is possible we can have the class work section dedicated for this thing so for example we click on the class work option right here and here you have the create option with you along with this we have two more options one is your google calendar other is your class drive folder so one good thing about this Google Classrooms platform is it creates a class drive folder automatically for you and how it is going to help you. For example, if you are managing like two, three different classes on the Google Classroom platform and you keep on sharing some notes, some books, etc. with your students. So whatever attachments you are giving them the attachments in the form of some documents whether pdf word or etc not the live links that you are getting from the youtube but the attachments that you are adding for them for their reference that will be stored automatically in a class drive folder so maybe even after one month or maybe after the semester you need to check that whatever i have shared with the students you can find all those details in the same folder we will explore this once we make some attachment we will see this class drive folder that how it gets updated because currently we have not made any pdf or doc attachment so it will be empty right now next to this we have google calendar option so if you have to mark something like in uh, your courses we have several types of uh, scheduling to be done we have several types of schedules to prepare in the calendar itself maybe the sessional exams maybe the class test etc so you can mark them on google calendar directly and they will be updated in the same course stream so when we use this google classrooms platform the main advantage is that it helps you to integrate with other products of google itself whether it is google calendar whether it is google docs google slide etc everything is integrated on the same platform and you are allowed to access all these things for free it means you can manage even your entire course with this single platform so for instance if we click on this google calendar right now and maybe you want to add some task in the calendar so it will instantly take you to another window with google calendar and maybe we want to add some task like on 9th of june we want to have some class test at 11 a.m so i can mark it here and we can adjust it like we may have a class test on maths so i'm adding it up here and the time etc you can update from here if you want to add some more details about task that you can update here if you want to adjust reminder for the students so if they need to get some reminder that you can update from here and the event information we can have if there is some location to be described some attachments to be given everything is here with you and once you are done with the um, 
initial adjustments you can save it and it will be active in your calendar and you can get the references as well as reminders so if some other students are also included in these announcements or the schedule that you have booked in your calendar they will also get the reminders so for the class test if you have added up some email ids of the students they will automatically get the reminders for this so this is how from the same classroom platform you can manage your calendars as well and you can have your entire semester plan on your calendar you can mark dates for the sessionals for the test for the assignments everything you can manage from there and now let us close this one and now come to the create option that will help you to create class work in different formats so first of all we need to create the class work and on the uh, student side currently this class work section will be empty they will not have a class work because we have not assigned anything right now so instead of uh, working here let us get back to create option and we can have different options to be used here first we have assignment then we have quiz assignment questions if you want to add some material we want to share, uh, add or if you have created one post post earlier and you want to reuse that that is the option if you want to create certain topic for further uh, sessions then that also you can create so we will explore few of these options first of all we have the assignment so maybe if you want to assign certain assignment to the students and you want them to uh, submit it through this google classroom platform that is possible so we can add the details right here so let us take an example that i'm adding a assignment with the, a title like uh, write an essay on uh, any topic you can have for example national day we can have so this is the title of the assignment that we are assigning to the students and if you want to give some instruction to the students that you can put in the instruction section so for this maybe we want to write this uh, write in 500 words first instruction and then uh, use good english one more instruction and maybe anything that you want to update further that we can have here and other than this there are few additional settings that you can make first let us explore this right bar in this what we are going to have uh, let me edit it again in the right bar first of all we have to whom you want to assign this assignment so the same as what we had in the stream section now we can make the selection over here so if you want to assign this assignment to different uh, courses that you are managing from the classroom you can select them all or if you want to do it for the one course only you can select that similarly selection for the students maybe if it is a punishment assignment that you want to give to few students only you can select their names if it is for all the students then you can definitely select all students from here so depending upon how you are dealing with the assignments you can put that now comes the other important part right in the beginning of the session we have created the grade categories and now we can use that because this assignment will belong to the assignment category we can choose it from here you can see all those four grade categories are coming here right now because this google classroom platform is helping you to manage grades of the students as well so we can make a careful selection from here so let us take this assignment section and now because in a semester you may be assigning different assignments to the students and you may have allocated a percentage of marks to the students for this so maybe if we have 10 marks for the assignment in the semester we can choose the points from here so maybe if you want to give two assignments in the semester so you can have a separation according to that so maybe first assignment i want to have for the six marks so I'm adding up that here in the points. And then the next thing we have is you can set up the due date for the students when they want to submit assignments. So that information you can add. So maybe we can click on the date here and we can make selection like maybe on 10th of June, we want them to submit the assignment. And if it is time restricted also that you can update from here. After making this selection, if you want to highlight the topic as well, that to what topic this particular assignment uh, belongs to you can create that also so maybe if i can 
use the drop down menu we can use the create topic option here and i can write uh, maybe uh, general english is a topic just a random example i'm taking so this will be your initial settings that you require to do and now comes one more important thing that is your rubric option this is for bias free grading of your students and many uh, teachers love to use this rubric option to do assessment of their student assignments and how you create this rubric on classroom platform this is very simple you just click on this rubric option and then create rubric if you already have uh, some rubric created on your classroom you can reuse that or if you have created that already on some sheets you can also import that but currently we are creating it right here so we are using create rubric option and here because the rubric we are uh, creating for this particular assignment so the name of the assignment is on the top and then the scoring marks it is uh, showing us that currently because we have not added up any criteria so it is giving us a, uh, a random value by one so as we will keep on updating the criteria as well as point assigned to each this one will be updated automatically so let us start with the first one criteria title because we are creating a sample assignment over here on general english so according to that i can update some criteria over here in your case if it is any other specific subject you can update it accordingly so maybe here i want to add a vocabulary test so criteria 1 will be vocabulary how well they are using vocabulary in while writing their essay so for this if you want to add any description that is optional you can update that so that your students can be uh, aware about that what criteria description you have for this and then we can have the marking scheme so maybe for this vocabulary i want to have three level of marking means maximum three points i'll be giving and then reduced levels i'll be creating further so let us say maximum three points at third level and what will be the third level for example good use of vocabulary this is the first criteria on level 2 now i can use plus and on level 2 for example i want to assign point 2 at level 2 for which students who use average vocabulary so average use of vocab is the second description i'm adding and the third level of point for example i keep it as one and then maybe level one of course and this one possibly poor use of vocabulary so this is how we will be evaluating students at different levels depending upon how well they use vocabulary in their essay writing so you can see now we have three updated as the scoring point over here but as we have created this assignment with maximum 6 marks so if you want to adjust all those marks with the rubric itself so what you can do is you can simply create another criteria of remaining 3 marks and for that we have two different options first we can use add a criterion from the bottom of your screen so we already have add a criterion option right here or if you don't want to use add a criterion we can simply duplicate the existing criteria for this you can click on the three dots available right in front of your first criteria and then click on duplicate criterion so that you need not to type everything again so we can create duplicate criteria over here and we can just replace it so maybe the second criteria i want to create for grammar so how well for this essay writing they are going to use their grammar for that also i'm going to do some scoring so we can again have it on three levels and we can just change this one so that students can be notified that they will be evaluated on the basis of grammar as well and there will be three level of uh, assessments so these two criterions we have used and you can see total marks are 6 now and we can save this and your rubric is ready and you can see here now we have two criteria with six points total so your rubric is updated and your students will also be able to see this criteria we will explore that after having all the adjustments on your right window there are few more attachment options that you can explore definitely 
So same as what we had in your stream section, all the same things are already present here. Drive, YouTube, upload and link, same as your stream setting. But there is one more additional option, which is create. And interestingly, your Google Classroom platform is allowing you to have interaction with all other platforms managed by Google itself. You can have Google Docs, you can have Google Slides, Google Sheets, Google Drawings, and Google Forms, because these are some of the most important educational platforms that we can access for different types of uh, assessments for the students, or even for delivering lectures, as well as to have interactions with the students. So depending upon what type of assignments you have, maybe if you want to share some docs with the students, you can create them. If there are some slides to be shared from your previous session that you can attach over here, or you can create them directly from the slides, uh, Google Slides part. And you can have the sheets also to be created on Google Sheets, drawings or forms, anything. Maybe some block diagrams you want to create and share. So you can go to the drawings part and you can create them. As well as if there are some survey forms to be filled, you can put them as well. So for instance, if you want to use a doc, so I'm just clicking on the docs part and it will take you to the Google Docs platform immediately. And here you can see all essential settings that we have almost same as the Microsoft Word option. So on Google Docs, Docs you can create your entire Word document now. So for example, first of all, I need to name this one. So I can rename it from untitled document to like maybe a test document and then you can see this is associated to your particular course so according to that course or the assignment whatever you want to announce you can write it here or maybe if it is uh, we can say class notes you can uh, paste them here so maybe i want to add a random instruction over here your essay will be evaluated for assignment marks just a random statement i'm adding here or you can have anything in the document and now we want to attach it to our google classroom assignment platform so for that what we'll do is we will go to the share option on the top right corner so if i click on this you will see different options and here we have short term course a teachers because uh, as a teacher we are doing this right now so we can click on this because you are want you want to share it with that uh, classroom course and we, if we click on this we can hit on done button and it will be immediately updated over there so if we get back to the platform you can see here the document is attached and if we refresh this one uh, we can see in the draft and then in the edit part so you can see the name is refreshed now, the test document, the same name that I have given in the Google Docs section. And now you can again have some settings. For example, either students can view this file or students can edit this file or they can make a copy of each student. Uh, so this, these are some options you can access from here. Now, once you have made all these settings, or maybe if you want to add some attachment also, for example, I'm uploading a book so that we can see that how it appears in the drive as well. So let me browse a random book and we can update that. For example, I have one uh, small uh, uh, notebook over here. So let us say I'm updating it here. And you can see for this also, we have say, said that students can view this file. So now I'm almost ready with all the adjustments that I want to make on this assignment. And now we can create on the assign option. And again, for the assign option as well, you have multiple things to do. One is direct assignment. Second is you can schedule this assignment. So maybe if you want your students to uh, get this assignment later on, maybe after weekend or maybe on the next week, you can schedule it according to that. Or you can also save it in draft. So currently we are going to assign it to the students to straight away. So I can click on the assign option and it will ask us to proceed ahead so we can do that. Soon after it is assigned from the terminal, all of you who have joined the session as student, uh, they will be able to see this assignment. So if I go to the student window now, for example, I'm opening the other browser and here, if I refresh it, we can see the classwork section and we will have a different 
uh, announcement that we have done recently in the classwork section. So you will see, write an essay on National Day. This is the assignment we have given to the students. And as well as in the stream section, you will have a quick update of this. In the stream section also, students will get an update of this. So you can see that the teacher has posted an assignment and they can click on this and they will be taken to the assignment further. And now comes the interesting part. Whatever grading you have created or whatever uh, rubrics options you have created, all of them are visible to the students so that they can be aware about that how their assignment will be evaluated. And in order to do that, if we can scroll down as a teacher, as a student, we are seeing this. So you can see the vocab option. It shows that the student will be evaluated with three marks if they use good vocabulary. And similarly, for grammar also, they are going to have three marks. So they can even uh, expand the criteria and they can see that how they can get different marks in these different criteria. So as you have made it as a public notice for the students, they will be aware that we will be having a bias free assessment of the, this assignment. And at the same time, they will be aware that they have to take care of vocabulary as well as grammar while submitting this assignment to get maximum uh, uh, marks. So they will be able to get three, three points in both categories. So based on this now, they can also have the test document to be accessed as well as the book that I have attached over here. So all of you who have joined this particular session, they can see all those details now. And in case, if any student finds any doubt about the assignment, they can have a chat with the teacher. You can see here, private comments it is written so that the student can have a personal communication with the teacher if they get any doubt with the assignment over here. So they can click right here and they can say that maybe uh, I do not understand such and such question. So possibly I'm writing a random comment over here and we will see how it works. So I'm posting it right here and then we can go back to the teacher's platform and if I access it again, let us see uh, if I refresh it and we can see the updates. From the stream section. Okay, so we can have this one. And here we can see all the list of the students who are assigned with this assignment. And we can see that if some of you are uh, submitting the assignment, maybe if you have done, we can see that here, turned in one and assigned 15. Both options are there. Means total uh, people who are assigned with this particular assignment, they are 15. So depending upon how many students you have in your classroom, the list will be updated. And how many have submitted their assignment? that will be also updated here. So you can see the progress instantly from here itself. And you can also see if they have made some attachment. So that will be also visible over here. So let us try one random assessment we can do from here. For example, as a student, now I have come to student window again. So how they can submit now, you can teach them the same process. First of all, they have to click on add or create in order to create their assignment. So we can click on add or create. So in case if they have already created their file on their drive, they can upload it from the file option. If they want to get it from the Google Drive, they also have that option. And if they have created certain link, maybe that is also possible. And in case if they want to use the services from Google platform itself, such as Google Docs we have, Google Sites we have, Sheets and Drawings we have. So if you have asked them to submit certain diagram, maybe they can use the Google Drawings option from here. They can create their diagram and they can submit it from here. So for instance, if they have a file to be submitted, like I'm uh, picking up one from here, uh, I can browse it and I'm uploading just a, a random example, maybe the same book I'm updating uh, from here. So as soon as it is ready, the student will be allowed to turn in. When they click on turn in, the assignment will be submitted to the teacher. So as we click on this, it will be asked that whether you want to submit this or not uh, along with the attachment. 
So we can click on turn in option right here. And after this, you will see that there is a, another option with unsubmit. So we can have uh, maybe the student wants to edit their assignment. In that case, they can unsubmit it. Otherwise, it will be ready uh, on the other side. So for this, we can have it like on the teacher's window. What we can have is we can go to the assignment section. And here you can see now two people have submitted. And we can see the list over here. First is this one. And second is this one. So because only two people have submitted. So any one of you, if you uh, have submitted anything, I can see that. So currently in the list of turned in students also, you can see that if some students have an attachment, I can see that. And here we can see no attachments. So that information will be clear to the teachers that if they have attached something or not. Now, if one student has an attachment over here, for instance, I can click on this to see what they have attached in the document. And for this, you can see all the updates made by the student I can see over here because I have attached a random book with the sequence. So I can see that in sequence over here. But at the same time, I can get the grading option as a teacher. So after I evaluate this particular file, maybe they have submitted their essay over here. And now I can see that, okay, this is the information. This is the vocabulary. This is the grammar they have used. And now I can put the grades for them on the both criteria that I have created already. So for example, for the vocabulary, I want to give two marks and for the grammar, I want to give three marks. So that information I'm updating here and you can see the highlights on this, all the levels accordingly, they are being highlighted considering whether we are giving them score on the first level, second level or on the third level. And as soon as we are ready with the marks of the assignment, you can see the total grade of the assignment is also updated. That is because the assignment was for total six marks. We can see that the five marks are assigned to the student. And once you are ready with the assignment marks, you can return the assignment to the students so that they can see that what marks they have got. And if you have any comments for them, that also they can see. So as soon as the marks is updated, you can click on return option. That is returning your uh, marked assignment to the students. So let me click on the return option. You can see a quick highlight of the student name as well as the marks we have given to the student. And as soon as I click on return, we can see the update in the student window. So depending upon which student we are returning to, we can go to the profile. Uh, means the students can see that on their profile and I can refresh this window to see the changes that teachers has made. So we can see here the marks right straight away. So we have five marks out of six. So student can get a initial update that what marks they have received for this particular assignment. And even from both categories that they have received two marks in the vocabulary section and three marks in the grammar section. So in this manner, you can update marks of all your students on live platform and they can have instant update about how they are progressing throughout the session. And as long as you keep on updating your assignments, anything that you have in the sequence, all the marks will be updated in your uh, grading section within the short term course itself. So now we can see that uh, we have graded option also added up here. Earlier, we were having only two options. One was turned in, one was assigned, and one is graded over here now. Once you uh, grade up all the students who are in the list, the graded list will be updated, and you can see the grades also now. We can click on this, and we can see for that specific student, and if there are more, you can again go to the uh, list over here, and you can explore that what grades you have given to different students. So that will be your initial setting with one type of assignment that we have created. Now let us explore a few more things. For example, we go back to the classwork section and maybe uh, not just an assignment, you want to create something else for the student. We can click on the create option again and we have the option to create a quiz assignment. We have question, material, anything in hand. So for example, we want to create a quiz assignment. We can click on this. And it will immediately take you again to a new assignment window. And let me add a title for this. Maybe a weekend quiz we want to create for the student. 
to assess whatever we have taught them throughout the week so that we can have a feedback of student that how much their learning progress is going on. So we can say that in the instructions, we can put up some details for them. For example, you can take five minutes to attempt this quiz. Or if you have any other thing, maybe uh, you can say them that this will be included in the internal marks or the assignment map marks. That also you can update here. So for example, this quiz will be a part of your assignment. So two instructions I have added. Depending upon what type of course you are teaching, you can update that. And you can see here, in comparison to the normal assignment that we were having earlier, now there is a blank quiz already inserted by the platform that you can utilize to create your quiz now. So for this, we can just click on the quiz and it will take you to Google Forms platform where we can create any type of quiz for the students. For example, first of all, we can rename this quiz. So we can say again, our test quiz over here. If you have some description for this quiz that you can update here, and then we can start writing the questions. First of all, I'm updating here one untitled question that I'll be updating. Just some random questions I'm adding up here. Uh, what we have learned in today's session. Just a random question I have added. And then you can have different options for the quiz. Like currently it is a paragraph based answer. But quizzes can be of MCQ type or anything you can have in the sequence. So we can use the drop down menu from here. And you can see the answer can be short answer type, multiple choice type. You can have check boxes, you can have drop down menu, or you can also allow students to update some uh, files as per the requirement. So maybe currently we want to create a multiple choice question. And in the option one, I'm just updating Google Classroom and maybe option two, I'm updating Moodle. Just two options I'm adding for this particular question. And you can add more questions in the sequence. And also, you can have points assigned for this particular question. How that is going to benefit you? If you make your point assignment in advance, it means you need not to do grading manually later on. When the students will be attempting this quiz, the grading will be done automatically and they will even be able to see their marks by the end of the, their attempt. So let us make it a graded quiz and we can update the marks and how the marks will be updated. For this, we first need to create an answer key. So click on the answer key and mark the right answer. For example, the answer will be Google Classroom. So I have tick marked it and I can assign the points now. For example, I'm assigning two points for this question. And now we can hit on the done button and your first question is ready. We can update one more question, for example, and you can just click on this add question option and a new question will be inserted. So for instance, I can say like, uh, what was your experience with today's session? Another random question I'm adding up and we can again have, for example, a multiple choice question or maybe short answer, whatever you want to update. So I'm again adding one of multiple choice question. So we can have like different levels over here. So we can have excellent, maybe good, satisfactory or bad, everything we can update over here. So four levels are updated and you can see that this is some AI powered platform and you can see the automatic options are arriving as I'm clicking on the add options. So the fair and poor are updating automatically. So this is the benefit of AI working behind. So this has now created your another set of question. And of course, we can again update the answer key. So for example, we are adding as good as your point over here as the right point and then marks two for this one. So now two questions we have updated. Uh, let us save our time and we will be using only these two now. So now we are ready to send this question and you can also see total points over here and you can also see the responses also later on for the students and if you want to make some settings also that is also possible from here so all those things once you have updated from the google forms you can click on send button and it will be updating some information based on uh, to whom you want to address this particular uh, assignment so maybe if you have the email list right here you can update that 
or if you don't have you can use that from the uh, classroom window itself so for example i'm updating uh, one render email id from here so that we can see the responses on the other side so then click on the send button and we can see the updates once your quiz is added i can refresh the window again and you can see the updates will be done here so this is the weekend quiz we have created and you can see the test quiz form is now updated here. And if you want to edit more in this assignment, we can definitely do that. First of all, we can go to this uh, right bar and here we can choose the short term course or the students, whatever we want to add. The grading category we can choose. So for example, if this is a part of class test, I can use the class test category and the points maybe I have added four points for this one. So, or maybe six points, whatever you want to add. So accordingly, we can update that. Then the due date for the session, maybe it is, uh, if it is like uh, 10th, we can update that. And again, you can add the rubrics as well. But currently, because this is already a assigned quiz, so we may not need the rubric in this case because the marks we have already updated in the questions itself. So let us do the assignment now. I'm clicking on the assign button and the quiz will be ready on the student's platform as well. So it will just take a few seconds and we can see 18 people are assigned with the quiz. So all those who have joined this session, they will be now assigned with the quiz and no one has yet submitted the quiz answers. So we can see zero turned in. So if you people start responding to the quiz, accordingly the outputs will be updated right here. So for example, let us go to student window and here we can see the updates in the course. Now in the stream section, you can see the teacher has posted new assignment weekend quiz. So the students can get quick update from here. They can click on this and now the quiz is ready here. So they can take the quiz right now. For example, they can click on the test quiz and they can start marking it. So currently, the email ID it will take automatically and we can start marking. For example, we are marking this one as this one. So the students have updated their points and they can click on the submit now. So as soon as they are clicking on the submit, now you can see they can view their score. Why? Because we have already generated the points as well as we have marked the answers over there. So students can instantly see their scores right here. If they want to open the assignment again, that is also possible. So maybe they want to see their score. They can click on open scores and the information they can find right here. If they have marked it right, they can see that they have received four points out of four. So that will be in sequence. So after updating these details, we can get back to your teacher's platform. And in the teacher's platform, we can look after that how many people have turned in. So, because I can see that two people have turned in, so that list is available over here. And for the session, we can uh, check if uh, how many people have turned in and what are the responses. So, as a teacher, you will find this information right here. This one and this one, two people have turned in, so that information is right here. And you can see the information uh, based on the markings that students have uh, got. So, maybe you can check that in detail also. You can click on the uh, details. So, okay, because this will not be graded from our side, the students have got their points. So that is updated in their system automatically. So these are the details that we are getting. And uh, depending upon how students are uh, updating their responses, they will be getting all the scores. And the graded system in our uh, platform will be also updated later on. So currently, because this uh, quiz we have marked up to the Sunday, so accordingly it will be waiting for the responses and then it will be updating all the graded marks. So this is your second type of assignment we have explored on Google Classroom platform. Now, whatever we are getting from this particular platform, we can see that in the grade section. So you can see here in the grade section, everything is being updated one by one. So currently, because only one part we have updated, so this one I have graded only, so I can see five marks assigned to one person. So this shows currently the class average. And if we want to see it with the individual scores, we can scroll down and we can evaluate that. 
So with all that, those marks, we can update it. And similarly for the quiz as well, the things will be updated. We can uh, grade that one by one after we receive all the uh, updates from the students and we can update that grading also over here. And as long as you keep on adding more assignments, more tasks for the students, the entire grading system will be updated in different columns in sequence. And all those columns you can access for your final class assessment. You can see here class average will be updated and the grades of individual students will be updated. So even your final result will be prepared on this Google Classroom grade section. So it will help you to create complete interaction with the student and automatically manage your entire grades as well without putting up separate registers, separate books or separate things for them. And whatever you have created over here, for example, if we go to the class work section and we go to the class drive folder. In the class drive folder, now you can see all different things that we have exchanged with the students. So whatever exchange you have on the classroom with students, whether you have sent them something or you have received something from them, everything is updated here. So it will be because currently it is from the uh, whatever I have shared on the other terminal. So that is being updated here. And with the time, with the name of the person, as per the interaction, we can see all those documents over here. So this will help you to manage even the class sessions as well as your outcomes uh, in the form of grades. So everything will be managed in the same sequence. So this is definitely going to help all the students as well as the teachers to manage uh, even a bigger set of courses. So for example, if I have multiple courses in the session, so say that I can go to the uh, class section over here and you can see two classes are running right now. And I can manage both of them from here. And similarly, if you have some additional classes, you have some work to review, everything that you have in the list, you can manage that from here. You can also check the calendar from here. You can also get updates about when the assignments are due. For example, you can see these assignments we marked from the uh, Google Classroom platform when we uh, created the due dates for the assignments. So we can check that directly here from the our calendar as well so that we can remind things to ourselves as well as to the students that when the assignment is due and if there are sessions due with the students that information will be also there if there is some event planned for the semester that will be also available here so everything we can access from the same platform and similarly on the student terminal they will be able to get uh, complete details about how they are performing uh, throughout their class. So whatever outcomes they are getting for their classwork, they can see the updates in uh, regular sequence over here, as well as they can access the class drive folder. So in case maybe they forget to save certain type of notes that they have submitted earlier, so they can find their notes from here as well. Because this is one thing that uh, as a student, uh, I have submitted from here. So in their drive folder, they can see their notes. So even if they are creating like 10 different assignments in the entire course program, they can have the list right here and they can refer to their assignments anytime uh, in the access. So this will create an easy platform for the students as well and they can uh, uh, even interact with the teacher uh, right from the comment sections over here. So this was all that we could discuss about the Google Classroom platform and I hope I could deliver some relevant information to you all. And of course, if we have any queries or any updates for this particular session, we can have that in the chat box now.